My name is Kavita Musty, and on this special episode of Inside In House, we have Emily Head, Senior Director, Global Operations, RBC Law Group at the Royal Bank of Canada. Emily, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, first question. Please describe your career path and how you got to where you are today. Well, I, I actually didn't uh, plan to be a lawyer at all until uh, I went, did go to law school. And even then, I wasn't really, uh, I didn't really have that in mind. I actually have a background in urban planning. That's what my, uh, my educational background is in. And I did get into law a little bit by accident, uh, but it turns out I quite liked it. And I ended up summering, articling, and becoming an associate for a number of years at a major Canadian law firm in their commercial litigation department. And as part of that role, I had the opportunity to take a secondment at RBC in the, in the law group. Um, and so I made a number of uh, connections there within the law group. And when a role came up in the litigation department here, I was uh, I was hired on, and that was 11 years ago. So I've been in the litigation department, or I was with the litigation department at RBC for 11 years, where I was handling litigation, uh, both in Canada and internationally for a number of different RBC businesses. So that gave me a pretty good exposure to RBC and you know its inner workings. And then in July, I took on my current role as Senior Director of Operations for the law group. Um, and in that role, I'm responsible for a little over 50 of the non-lawyers within law group who provide support services to the lawyers. So that includes technology, e-discovery, external counsel management, finance, so all, all of those support functions um, that are required to run a law group of this size. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. And I understand you recently made a switch from litigation to operations. Why did you do this? It wasn't uh, an easy decision. I was really happy where I was. Um, I, I loved my team. I really liked the work. I felt challenged and I had developed in my career to a point where I had, you know, pretty deep expertise in the area of securities litigation. Um, but this role came up and, you know, I thought, what, why wouldn't I take this on? And, you know, the answers that came to mind were all of the ones that I just described. And that didn't seem like enough to, to keep me um, from taking such an exciting role. Um, it was such an opportunity provided to me to, to gain a new set of skills, um, you know, leading a team of 50 people, having led a team of, uh, you know, three, uh, sitting on the law group's operating committee, seeing how senior management makes, makes their decisions. It's, it's such a um, new experience for me. And then, you know, really effectively managing a business unit. So, the budget, the staff, all the technical components. So it, it really was something that uh, I couldn't pass up. Um, and, you know, I think that even if I do return to the practice of law someday, I will have gained so much more experience leading a team of talented people who have specialized expertise in areas that are not the practice of law. And I think that that can only be uh, an asset for any future role I might take on. How were you able to make such a transition from litigation to operations? Well, I'd say there's a few factors at play in that one. Um, first, it really does speak to the culture at RBC, where people are really encouraged to move around within the organization to gain different skill sets and have exposure to different areas of the bank. Um, you know, RBC is really willing to provide opportunities for people like me to lead in areas where they don't necessarily have the exact technical expertise that the team does. And, you know, I find that that leads to situations where you can actually have multiple careers within one organization. Um, you know, for example, I can think of a lot of people who in my time in the law group um, actually moved on to different roles within law group, but also moved on to different roles within the bank uh, in other areas. So places like compliance, HR, risk, 
and even the business itself. It's uh, it's really a great culture here to be able to do all of those sorts of different things and have the backing for it. And then, so that sort of leads me to the second factor, which is I had a lot of support, you know, even at the highest levels of the law group. So the chief legal officer, Maria Duvas, um, who I had worked with in litigation, was fully supportive of me taking on this role. Uh, and, you know, Lucille D'Souza, who is my current manager, who actually hired me for this role, you know, she uh, obviously took a chance uh, that a securities litigator could run the law group. And my manager at the time, Jane Waiter, she has always provided me with endless support and encouraged me to try new things and, and really challenge me and take on new responsibility as I developed. So it, just as the bank is really supportive of this type of movement, um, so is the law group. And the, the law group gives lots of opportunities to um, to anyone within the law group really to, to move around, try different things through secondments or even taking on uh, new roles permanently. And I, I really do think that that's a testament to the growth mindset of the law group. You know, it's a significant time investment for management to have people moving around in different roles uh, quite a bit. But, you know, they have their eye on the end goal, which is that it produces a set of well-rounded, resilient employees who really know the organization really well. And then finally, you know, I had to have faith in myself. That really was it at the end of the day. Um, You know, RBC, like I said, and the law group is fully supportive of people moving around, but they're not going to force anybody to do anything like that. Uh, And so I had to, at the end of the day, take a leap of faith and um, trust that I had the skills necessary to adapt to a new and completely different role. And did your career in litigation help set you up for success in operations? Yeah, well, I I think lawyers in general have a really broad skill set that's applicable in many different types of roles. So, you know, it's critical thinking, it's asking questions to really drill down to the the heart of the issue. Um, It's curiosity and a desire to find the best solution for a client. But I also find that litigation in particular provided me, at least, with a really unique skill set that includes a higher comfort level with taking on new things. Every case I encountered as a litigator required me to learn inside and out the product or the situation that was um, at part of the dispute. And I find that that tends to produce people who don't shy away from learning new things. Uh, The other thing is that in my litigation role at RBC, I interacted a lot with the group that I now lead and probably more than other non-litigation lawyers. And that's because litigation really is a heavy user of, um, you know, external counsel, for example. So I was familiar with the external counsel program, our e-billing and our matter management technology. And we're probably in litigation the only group that really uses our e-discovery team quite regularly. So all of those things allowed me to make a transition into a, into a role that is, is quite different, but at least somewhat familiar. Sounds very exciting. And are you enjoying operations so far? It's great. It's all those things that, you know, I've just described. It's a challenge. It's new things every day. It's exposing me to lots of different areas that uh, that I never, you know, had to think about before. And so it's it really is all those things that uh, I'd hoped for. Excellent. And finally, how do you and the team at RBC select outside counsel to work with? Well, I think it really depends on uh, the matter in in question. And so if it's one that requires uh, specialized expertise, really, we go with the firm that has a department with that expertise or a lawyer at the firm who has that expertise. But if you're talking about a less specialized matter, I think really there's a, there's a few more factors that we we consider. One is a track record of high quality work, Um, you know, a firm that we can trust and we know that they will produce um, a good product for us. And secondly, and it sort of builds on the last one is whether we have a strong relationship with that firm, an established relationship where 
Uh, we know the quality of their work and they know our business, which is another really important aspect of uh, working with a firm successfully. And then finally, there's cost. And it's not necessarily that it's, you know, the firm with the cheapest hourly rate. It's really, are is the firm providing value for money? And really, that means, you know, are they are they staffing their files appropriately so that, you know, it's not a partner leading the day to day. It's partner. It's a partner just coming in to deal with the strategic decisions, and it's, uh, you know, associates or or others taking on the day to day role. So, I think it's I think it's a, a number of factors, and um, we we weigh them all depending on the situation. Well, thank you again, Emily, for sharing that with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And thank you for watching. Thank you.